Welcome, thank you for joining us. If you're here local, we would love for you to join us on a Sunday morning at nine o'clock or 1115. If you wanna find out more about our ministries or to support them through giving, just go to our website at fbcokie.org or you can download our church app. All you have to do is search FBC Okeechobee in the app store. Here are some announcements. Our small groups are gonna be beginning again next Sunday, July the 12th. Uh, so if your class wants to meet on Sunday morning in your classroom, that's perfectly fine. If your class wants to continue meeting at another time or in another location, or if your class isn't ready to meet at all yet, we're perfectly fine with all those things. So be sure you check with uh, Pastor Tom or your small group leader so that you know uh, exactly what's going on with your class if you don't already. We're excited about being able to start those back. We wanna give you a lot of flexibility in uh, where and how you guys want to meet. Also, our children's church nursery will be starting back and we've set up extra rooms so that those um, kids will be able to be socially distanced better. So we'll have two children's church rooms, two nursery rooms, and we're even subdividing and fixing even some of those rooms and even um, even spreading them out even further to try to do our very best for social distancing. But if you don't feel comfortable yet with your kid going to the nursery or to children's church, we totally understand that. You feel free to keep them with you in the service, no problem at all. One last thing, uh, last Sunday night in church conference, the church approved a plan to move forward with our new worship center in construction and a plan for any financing that may need to happen in that as well. So we are ready if you haven't started your pledges yet that you made, we are ready for you to start doing that. I know some of you have already begun, but if you haven't, now's the time. Also, if you didn't get the opportunity to do that earlier, uh, back in early 2020, and you would still like to pledge towards our building, we would be happy to help you with that if you wanna to give towards that. You can see any of our pastors, any of our staff, or call the church office and we'll get you taken care of real quick. You have a great time worshiping with us. There is so much truth in the words of this song. I love the Lord and He is worthy of my worship. He is all of the things that we talk about in this song. And if you know Him, you know that He is good. He is faithful and that His mercy never fails us. I can testify that His mercy has never failed me, no, not once, although I fail Him every day. This song that says that all my days I've been held in His hands, knowing Him, knowing His character, and understanding who He is, it comes through in these words and in the celebration of that. There are so many things as we walk through this life that we get to experience with Him. Worship to me is just the overflowing on the outside of what God has done on the inside and what He is still doing on the inside. Because His goodness is running after me, that is a promise straight from Scripture. In Psalm 23, David says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I want to dwell in Him today and in this moment and as we worship Him in truth. He is here with us today. He is in our presence. He is good and He is faithful, and His mercy never fails.
Hey guys, hope you're having a wonderful holiday weekend or have had a wonderful holiday weekend if you're watching this uh, video a little bit later in the week as we celebrate our nation's independence and the establishment of the United States. I uh, hope you uh, had a good time shooting some fireworks and shoot a bottle rocket for me. But um, today I want to talk about somebody that doesn't fit. When you look at this whole list of people, this person kind of, oh, how are they there? But they're an incredibly interesting person. I think one of the more interesting people in Scripture because of their background and how God uses them and how God talks about them through Scripture. And that's Rahab. We know her as Rahab the prostitute. You know, She was part of that larger story of the Israelites, Joshua leading them, conquering and taking the city of Jericho. She's talked about in Hebrews chapter 11 in verse 31. It says, It was by faith that Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Now, there's just certain occupations that we associate with people, right? Joseph from the Bible, carpenter, Matthew, the tax collector, David, shepherd boy, Rahab, prostitute. It's just kind of how we think about it. I mean, it's strange, but when you mention her name, immediately that occupation just comes right with it. You know, the King James Version oftentimes calls her a harlot, the King James translation. She's, she's called this multiple times in Scripture, five times. In Joshua chapter 2, she's referred to as a prostitute, prostitute named Rahab. In Joshua 6, she's called Rahab the prostitute, called that again in verse 25, verse 17 and 25 in that chapter. And then twice in the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 11 that we just read, and then again in James chapter 2, she's called Rahab the prostitute. Five times. One would have been enough, guys. But God keeps coming back to it. And always remember, none of this is by accident. None of this is by chance. When God puts something in His Word, there's not a mistake. There's not a misstep. It's not just because there's a reason and a purpose. 
So what is that reason and purpose? Why keep bringing this up? I mean, we don't get a lot of details about our life, about her life. We don't know how she became a prostitute. We don't know her family background. We don't know what she was thinking and dealing with in, in her life leading up to the days when those two spies would come to her house. Because what happened was these two spies from the Israelites, Joshua sent them to kind of scope out Jericho, see what was going on. So they cross over the Jordan River and go into the city. And at one point, the, the king of Jericho and the military forces of Jericho are trying to find these spies because they figure out who they are and they know the Israelites are right on the other side of the Jordan. And Rahab hides them in her house. What caused her to do that? What made her jump at this? You know, we don't know. But it's so interesting, it's almost kind of like, what? When you read through the chapter, when you read through Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm reading about Father Abraham and Moses part in the Red Sea and Joshua in the Battle of Jericho, the faith of Joseph. I move all past her and there's David the greatest king of Israel, Samuel, the last judge who anointed David and was a, was a man of God through and through. And then, right there in the middle, Rahab. That's an interesting thing. That's an odd choice by God. If ancient Israel had a Mount Rushmore, which is kind of what Hebrews chapter 11 is for the nation of Israel. She'd be on it. We'd have, instead of Washington and Jefferson, Lincoln, Roosevelt, we'd have Moses, David, Abraham, Joshua. And way over there in the corner, by herself, away from everybody else, Rahab. That's how people would think about it. But that's not at all how God thought about it. God looked at it from a totally different point of view. I mean, from a human perspective, we're like, we can't let prostitutes get too close to these great men of faith. But God's evaluation is so different. When the Bible tells her story, there's no attempt to cover up her past. It's out there right in front of us. Who she is, where she comes from, what she was. Rahab was a prostitute. That's important. Was. That phrase. That word. Past tense. That's what she was. But, through the faith of God, she becomes something else. Now, she had to have kind of a hopeless beginning. First off, she grew up in a culture that really devalued women. They were in many cases seen more as property, the people. They were not, they, they were not allowed to testify in court, couldn't own property, all these different things. I mean, just awful the way they were treated. This is what she grew up in. And then she was who she was. She was a prostitute. Some people try to kind of downplay that. Some people will say, well, what the Bible really means is she was, she was an innkeeper. Nah, we don't have to gloss over the language, guys. We don't have to try to pretend words don't mean what they mean. It's okay. What she participated in and the life she was in at that time was sin. We don't have to gloss over that. It's okay. God's grace covers our sin. We can find forgiveness. We can find new purpose, new life, change. God's, God looks at us and He says, okay, here's who you were, and now here's who I'm going to make you. I think that at the heart of it is the great message of Rahab's life and the reason we see this woman mentioned multiple times in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. She is one of the most beautiful examples in all of Scripture of where you are and where God can take you to. The prostitute. The pagan prostitute in a pagan city, in a land that the Israelites were destined to conquer. She's in the Hall of Fame of Faith. She's in the same list as Moses and David and Joseph and Abraham. She's right there with Sarah. She's right there with Isaac. 
She's right there with Gideon and Barak and Samson. She's listed as the same chapter as the men and women that would give their lives as martyrs in the early church. That's fascinating. She took a risk when she brought those spies in. And that risk is what changed her life. I mean, when I think about why did she do this, you know, I believe that God kind of opened her heart. I think in this, the Holy Spirit was working in her to kind of open her heart to what God was doing. And when it came time to choose sides, she chose God. Listen to what she says to the spies in Joshua chapter 2, verses 12 through 13. She says, Now swear to me by the Lord, not your God, not a God, not some gods, the Lord. That's important. That you will be kind to me and my family since I have helped you. Give me some guarantee that when Jericho is conquered, you will let me live along with my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all their families. So this is the world she was living in. And she gets a remarkable deliverance. The spies agree. Spare family. They said, hang a scarlet cord outside of your window. Get all your family in there. And when the attack comes, we'll know that the house with the scarlet cord is not to be touched. There it was. Her promise. Now, here's the key. She heard the promise, and then she did something about it. She didn't forget about it. She didn't say, I'll do it later. If she had of, that attack came without that scarlet cord, dead. She would have had the same fate as the rest of Jericho. She makes this Hall of Fame of Faith for one reason. When the chips were down, she believed the promise. She believed God. She believed the spies. And she followed through and hung that cord. And these days passed by. Weeks, a week, two weeks. She tells her family what's happening. As Joshua was leading the people over the Jordan River into the Promised Land. And the city, which is already a thousand years old with its huge walls, is being prepared for attack by God as the nation of Israel marches around it. And when the walls came down, Jericho was defenseless. They were stunned. And up the hill, the nation of Israel rushes. The city was completely surrounded on all sides as they circled. And when those walls fell down, the warriors ran in from all sides. Nothing left. Everything burned to the ground except Rahab because she put her faith into action. She was spared. Her faith caused her to reach out and it guaranteed the salvation of her family as well. This is incredible. And it's a timeless message. You know, writers, pastors, they've seen a common theme over the life of Rahab for now almost 2,000 years as they wrote about her in light of the New Testament. She's the greatest picture of the fact that salvation is for sinners. This, this story, her life, shows us something super important, that no one is outside of God's grace. God's grace is for all of us. I mean, we look at her and we say, think of all that sin, think of the reputation, think of the past. And God says, you know what? I know about her past. I know what happened. I know where she's from. And you know what? I don't care. Her sins are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. She put her faith in me, and I'll be her deliverer. I'm going to rewrite the story. I'm going to change her destiny. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to put everything back together. Now, what's your sin? 
You may say, well, I'm not like Rahab the prostitute. And you may be right. I mean, I have that past. But we all have sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. And somebody may be listening to this today. You do have that past. You do have that sin. That is where you're from. Let me tell you, God's not done with you. If He can save and put in the Hall of Fame of Faith a prostitute from a pagan city, then He can take care of you too. It's a beautiful example. See, this message brings enormous hope for all of us. See, the worse you may feel about yourself, the worse you may feel about whatever sin you're struggling with, the more hope there is to be found in her story, in who she is. See, there's no pit too deep that the love of God can't reach us. There's no sin so bad that God can't break through. We feel that way, right? Satan tells us that. He tells us that we're not good enough. We can never measure up. God doesn't love us. We can't ever get out of this hole. That is not true. That is a lie from the pits of hell. Wherever you're at, whatever's happening in your life, God's big enough to bring you through it. If He could bring Rahab out of it, if He could save her and her family in that city with that destruction, He could save you too. If He can change her destiny, He can change yours. It's just about the faith. What do you put your trust in? What are you seeking after? See, she made the book by faith Rahab. See, God delights in this. He delights in saving sinners. He delights in changing lives. Take that. Run with it. So what happened to Rahab after the fall of Jericho? That's a real interesting story. See, we know this much. She married a Jewish man named Salmon. Together they had a son. Named him Boaz. His name pops up a little later. He marries a lady named Ruth, who is the title figure in the book of Ruth. Boaz and Ruth give birth to a son named Obed. Obed, then he had a son. His name was Jesse. And one day Jesse had a son, and his name was David. Get the picture? She's David's great-great-grandmother. Stop let that sink in for a second. A prostitute from a pagan city that no one would have given a second look at is the great-great-grandmother of the greatest king Israel ever had. God changed her story. And hundreds of years later, her name shows up somewhere else. It shows up on the first page of the New Testament in the book of Matthew. It gives the genealogy of Jesus. It tells us where He came from. And in verses 5 and 6 of Matthew chapter 1, it says this, Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse and Jesse the father of King David. And it continues on all the way to Christ. See, not only did God save her, both spiritually and physically, God used her. She's a direct lineage in the life of Jesus Christ. She's part of Jesus' family tree. And I believe if you know Jesus, someday you're going to meet her in heaven. Rahab proves it. She proves God's grace. So wherever your life's at, whatever sin you're dealing with, whatever you're struggling with, don't let it be something that keeps you from coming to God. He loves you in spite of all that. The other thing to think about is this. Whatever sin may have happened in your life, previously or in the life of someone else that we can so easily sit in judgment of, God doesn't care. 
And we need to move past it too. Pray with me. Father, we thank You, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to praise Your name, to celebrate someone like Rahab, God, that You changed. So God, I pray that You change us and our hearts in the way we deal with those around us, to understand our need for salvation and our need to show grace and love to all the world around us, Lord. You are so good to us. We love you and thank you for that. In your holy name we pray. Amen. If you're watching this video with us, we'd love to connect with you. We've got some digital response cards that are available for you. They're in the post if you're watching on Facebook, and they're in the description of the video if you're watching on YouTube. We'd love for you to fill one of those out. If you have any questions about our church, want to connect with us, would like to speak to a pastor, we'd be glad to, to set up whatever we can to email, text, phone call, see you in person, however we can help you. You can also give us prayer requests through that as well. We'd love to pray for anything that you may be dealing with in your life, any way that we can help you. We love you guys. We hope to see you soon, and we hope that you have a blessed day.